Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Cloud Native Live. Very excited to have you all visiting us once again and seeing this amazing program. Uh, I'm Annie. I'm a CNCF ambassador. I'm here with amazing speaker and a guest as well, but a bit more on that later. Um, very excited to be here today. Uh, just as always before these streams, uh, please keep the code of conduct in mind so that uh, be essentially be respectful within the chat so that uh, the TNCF code of conduct will be met and we will not face any issues there. So be respectful of our, uh, of our other watchers and speakers and, and so forth. Very happy to have you all here. Um, as always, you can ask questions within the session and after the uh, speech has the so forth has ended, very happy to receive those as well. But yeah, let's get started now. So we're here with Steve uh, from Microsoft. Uh, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, perfect. So excited for your session today on Notary versus two. Uh, version two. Uh, why don't you get started and show us what you've been working on? Well, thanks. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity to talk about all the great work that's been happening um, across a number of different efforts. You know, we one of the things that we started out in um, a while ago, it, it was actually this effort started back in uh, 2018 at a KubeCon event where we all realized we really needed to uh, get re-engaged in solving the signing problem around content. And spe specifically, it was container images. Uh, Notary, Notary V1 was started in 2015. Uh, it was built at Docker. Um, it was it came out as Docker Content Trust. Uh, and its goal was to sign the content in registries. And that, you know, it did. Uh, one of the things that uh, there was a couple of problems with Notary V1 and Docker Content Trust. It, um, there were some usability issues. It was very difficult to use, difficult to configure. If you had the flag turned on or off, you might actually get, you will get different content from a registry. Um, there's trust and first use challenges. But the fundamental problem with it was uh, it didn't support content promotion. If I've got an image in a, a, pr a public registry and I want to pull it into my private registry, it's great to validate the signature of, uh, on the public endpoint. But when I pull it into my private registry, we wanted to be able to validate it there as well. And the problem is those signatures were tied to the location of the content. Um, so that was the, the real fundamental problem that we needed to go out and solve. Um, so that's, that's kind of how the, the whole project started. Uh, I, I work at Azure. I, I work on our container registries uh, that works on the private registries our customers use and the public registries that we uh, support for Microsoft content. Um, Microsoft's a software company, not just a cloud. Uh, and we need our software to run on AWS, on Google, on-prem. And this is like everything from Windows to SQL to .NET to Office apps and so forth. So um, we recognized that we needed to solve this in a cross-cloud, vendor-neutral way um, and not Azure-specific, right? That was a fundamental uh, goal of what we had to do. So um, we got a bunch of people together, and we, you know, it was a who's who of registries and cloud providers. It was awesome. Uh, the AWS folks hosted us at their, uh, uh, their location when we were all getting together on a regular basis. And we've been chugging at it since. Um, it's uh, it's interesting. You know, one of the, a lot of the challenges that we've been facing is like, you know, how, how do you sign content, and what is the platform capabilities that have to elevate uh, from there? So that's been the challenges we faced on what is exactly are the investments to make. Um, Notary V1 and Docker Content Trust required additional services to run on a registry. They're pretty complicated services. We built it for ACR. Uh, after a month or so, it, we like, it's still not done. and still a lot of work left. Uh, and we have some pretty, pretty really talented people that were uh, working on it. And then when it was all done, it still, you know, we realized it didn't support the, the core scenarios for content promotion. So when we engaged with Notary V2, we set out a bunch of goals. And those goals were promotion across registries was fundamental. Um, we wanted to make sure that the impact to registries was absolute minimal and not unique to signatures. Um, we recognized that uh, instead of just 
putting a thing that only supported signatures in a registry, what could we do to make it a generic capability to support other things as well? Um, so, and then we didn't want to have to create yet another service. So uh, we wound up realizing that if we improve registries to understand additional objects in a registry and they can be established a linkage between those, then we can meet some of our goal, all of our goals or they kept on going there. So what, uh, one of the fundamental things that, for instance, that we came up with was uh, all the Helm charts you have, all the pod spec, all the text files that you have, strings that reference your container image shouldn't have to change just to validate a signature, right? We didn't want anybody to have to change their existing infrastructure. The, the analogy we like to use is going into an airport and you know that workflow of getting in, getting approved and going on to the next step. Uh, you should be able to use your uh, existing documents and there's an extra check. So what we what one of the things that we you know designed around this was your reference doesn't change, but you can get information from your reference. So uh, for instance, the um, if you want to deploy a net monitor image, net monitor colon v1, or net monitor digest abc123, that shouldn't change just because you want to validate a signature on it. So that innovated this concept of reference types. Um, and if I can assign a signature to it, then why can't I assign a uh, SBOM, a software bill of materials or a system bill of materials or a scan result? So there's a lot of interesting things that kind of evolved from there. Um, it might help if I actually show a little uh, animation for how we think about this. Perfect. That sounds really good. And there's already people excited in the comments. They want to read the talks for this and, and they're sharing, I think, blog posts and everything. So awesome. very, very excited people already. Oh, Lord, I want to read the docs. Yes. <laughs> so I like that one. Um, OK, so let's I like comparing to uh, systems that are tried, proven, um, because there's been a lot of work put into those and they're kind of tried and tested. So one of the ones that I like using is the process of going to an airport, which is what we used to do and we're starting to do again in some aspects. And uh, I was reminded, you know, internationally, TSA, what does that mean? So if I go to the airport, there's that person that keeps you from going into the secured area, uh, a transportation security administration, something, I'm actually not sure. In this case, it's not the timestamp authority. It's the of the person that says you cannot enter the secured staging area of the airport yet. You have to prove who you are. So I walk up to the airport and I say, here's my pod spec. Here's my helm chart. I want to be boarded on that Kubernetes plane over there. Um, and you know the agent goes, that's great, but who are you? It's great you want to go there, but who are you? So I provide them some identity. Now, the identity can't be a note from my parents. Right, it's got to be an identity that can be validated and, and you know proven. Um, now, the identity doesn't matter where I am. Right, I'm Steve Lasker, regardless whether I'm on the East Coast, the West Coast, Europe, wherever. My identity is independent of location. So the agent looks at that and says, "Okay, that's your identity. Let me. It's from one of the 50 states or one of a bunch of different countries. If it's a passport." And they may or may not accept information from certain states that don't have real ID, for instance, just a detail here, or certain countries that aren't considered trustworthy for whatever that means. But at some point, now, the other interesting thing is I'm outside that red line. I'm handing my identity through the hole because I'm not allowed into the secure zone until I've proven that I'm worthy. That, ident that information to prove who I am is separable from me, right? I hand it through the window. That's really important from uh, what I call it, you know, the um, uh, Trojan horse attacks. If I had to go into the airport to give him my ID, I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, yeah, here's my ID. And by the way, I've got a gun pointing at you and I now own you. If I, sorry, <laughs> you know, if an exploit is I can execute code and I need to get code on the machine. If the validation was I pull the content in and the signature is part of the content, then 
as it tries to run bad image from bad co or you know hey this looks good but it's signed by bad co if the image is already on the machine and the validation says no you're not allowed well the image is on the machine now i've got code execution so i want to be able to separate that so fine the tsa agent can see separate from me i'm not in the airport yet i might be a digital you know piece of identity and once that person has decided it passes the test, you are identified as one of the entities that we trust, then they stamp it with another signature, right? You get that little blue dot on your boarding pass, or if you gave them your, you know, your phone inside the system, they have stamped it that the TSA agent, the agent there says you are allowed into the staging area. Now, interestingly enough, if I go into the staging area, I get scanned. They want to know what the exact current state on new information. Somebody just discovered that I might have liquid and that's something they should look for or solid things in my shoes or whatever that might be. So scan is done and you know I'm approved, so I'm allowed in. But I'm in the staging area now. I still didn't board the Kubernetes plane, right? I'm just in the staging area. And I might have to go through some additional tests and verifications or whatever. Now, Agent 44, at the gate to the plane is going, whoa, 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 you're not getting on the plane yet. You have to prove that you are allowed. Have you been approved to be in the staging area? Prove it. Again, I give him my pod spec. In this case, Agent 44 doesn't care about my external identity, doesn't care about my driver's license or passport or I was signed by Wabbit Networks or anything like that. I'm in the staging area of a particular company. That Agent 99 signature is equivalent to my company's signature that you know proved it. So Agent 44 can say, okay, you've been signed. I will sign you again to say you're worthy to go into the production plane, and now off you go. So that's just kind of an interesting analogy that we use for content promotion, um, that if I were to apply it to uh, how would this work in, in our real software? So we have the small company, Wabbit Networks, that nobody's ever heard of, very intentional. Um, and Acme Rockets is our company that we work at. I want to deploy this image. Great. I was able to reach across the public internet. I got the image. I could even reach across the public internet and get the signature. That's all fine. I do have a policy manager that says, hey, content must be signed. Sure, signed. Go deploy it. Signed by who? I don't know. There's no policy here. Of course we want to do some testing of signed by who. But the other thing is what, you know, how many of you have environments where you have a VNet that protects that environment? There's no public egress. You can't go off to evilsite.co um, or, you know, public registries. They want that locked down to only the places they trust from a network boundary. So if that node is trying to reach out to some public endpoint to get the software bill of materials, to get some scan results or source or some other artifact, you can't get access to it. So this was the kind of fundamental principle. It wasn't just the images and the signatures we want to travel with the artifacts that you're trying to use in your environment. We wanted that entire graph. So, and of course, this isn't just one environment. Um, you have multiple environments and within each of those, you're standing up a private registry that is accessible from within that VNet. And it might be a hosted registry that supports VNets. You might stand up you know, uh, an open source registry or a project or a product. It's all great. But that's why we wanna make sure that all of these can support these capabilities. So the next one is, do I bring the public content into each one of those private registries? Well, that's not really a scalable solution. We don't have every plane, you know, individually check every person, right? Everybody goes into the secured staging area. It's approved. That's how it gets promoted. Companies stand up internal registries, which has the approved content. And there's lots of public registries that people interact with. It, you know, I'm having fun here with some old uh, uh, company names or you know, fictitious company names, but NVIDIA, Oracle, Microsoft, um, uh, IBM, there's lots of public registries that are software companies that distribute their content from their registries. You, know, you wanna be able to bring that stuff in. So this is where it gets also interesting with multiple signatures. 
And we'll get into some demos, but I wanted to provide some context to this. So why do we need to support multiple signatures? We talked about promotion within the environment. Well, you may not ever know of Wabbit Networks as a software company. When you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever the store is, the big box distributor, it's a redistributor. There's lots of products in that store. And you kind of give this trust because they're in that store that you trust. If that store is reselling that product, you kind of trust that that's a worthy product. So you may not know about Wabbit Network, so it doesn't matter that they have a signature on the content. If it goes to Docker Hub, Docker Hub is a redistributor, will sign their, sign with another signature the content that they trust. This is now certified by Docker for whatever that means. So now as a company, I could say, well, I, I do trust Docker Hub. If it's certified content from them, I've established that, that trust and relationship, that's fine. Now I might not, you know, Spacely Sprockets may not become Docker certified content, you know, and so forth. But inside of Acme Rockets, I can configure who I trust. I don't trust Wabbit Networks, but I trust Docker Hub. I might trust, you know, Spacely Sprockets and some other ones so I could pull information in. But what you're doing is you can establish a trust policy that says these are the entities I trust. These are the states that I trust. These are the countries that I trust. Maybe countries I don't trust to do an exclusion policy. But I can make that list. And now when I'm pulling stuff in, into the staging area, I can see if any of those are passed. One, it's in the staging area, I could stamp it with an Acme Rockets key. And now all internally, I don't need to worry about the policy of the day for what was externally pulled in. All I know is it was signed by Acme Rockets, it's the, it's the shared library content, that's approved, I'm gonna work uh, from that content. So, that's that's really kind of the the fundamental principles of what we wanted to support, um, and now it, it probably helps to show some real code on how this works. But were there any questions that before I jump in? There is, it looks like not so far. Quite often they come at the end, but please do everyone ask <laughs> as we go along. I'll hop in and ask your questions. But yeah, a demo would be really great. So let's get to that. Okay, so. Um, uh, I'm really happy to show that this is actually working with Azure Container Registry now. So we'll show the interactions. Uh, it's in a it's in dog food. It's not public just yet. Uh, we're working through the last details of it. But what you see here is I saved as an environment variable, so I don't have to paste it every time. But there's the Wabbit Networks Azure CRIO uh, registry that we have. It's an authenticated registry, so we're working through all the auth stuff as well. If so, now what I want to do is you know. Do a standard Docker build, Docker push. Nothing magic here. I'm now going to build this image and put it into the registry. And I want to sign it. OK, if I want to sign something, one of the things we've been focused on is what is it that our customers and users need for their production environments? Right? The production environments are the, you know, the critical environments that they don't really care about containers. That's the tech. They've got standard practices like VNets, like you know, X509 certs for, uh, for signing. That's what the crypto boards of those companies have approved. So what we're gonna do is take an X509 cert. I hear I did a self-signed cert. This could be a CA cert issued publicly. It could be by a cloud provider. You know, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna, that's what we're using here is I have a certificate that is going to be what I'm gonna sign with. And now I can simply sign that image. There's no external, no other additional services. It's just the registry capabilities with a notation CLI and an X509 cert, which is what companies are using today. I can see what signatures are on that image. And now I might wanna verify that image. Like I wanna see, does that image pass the test for the content I trust? Well, it's signed, but signed by who? Just because I just signed it here, fine. But this is like asking that agent at the airport to validate your identity, but they were never given a list of approved, you know, identities that they are allowed to trust. So note notation, go to review two, the notation CLI has a trust 
uh, sorry, an opt-in trust model, which is a secured by default model. So I have to tell the policy to trust the Wabbit network's key. So now if I try to verify, well, actually, let me show you that policy. So we can see this was the signing keys that I did in the previous step. And here's the certs that we trust for verification. So now if I try to verify that image, it passes because it's not just signed, but it's signed by an entity that I've trust. I can conf configure that trust. Now here's where it starts to get really interesting. Great, it's signed, great, you know, not it shouldn't be so hard. It starts to get interesting as to, well, I want that signature to travel. I don't want to change the digest. How do we implement these, these uh, changes on you know, a system so that we can promote this content? The Aura CLI is, uh, a, a OCI registry as storage is how the project started. And it's basically a CLI for interacting with the registry. And this concept of being able to push reference types to a registry is an implementation through an Aura's artifact spec. It basically says, hey, I can push something to the registry and it says this thing refers to this other one. The URS CLI knows how to ask the registry, hey, what information do you have for the named reference that you were using before? We don't want to teach, we don't want to say you have to ask for something special. Your Helm chart says net monitor v1. It says net monitor digest one, two, three, four, five, six. Go ask the registry, what do you have associated with the net monitor image? And you can see there's a, a notary v2 signature. And this uh, digest. Steve, by the way, we are yeah. not seeing completely the, the, the bottom of the field because there's kind oh, of like really? a name bubble there. So if you, yeah, perfect. Now everything oh, <laughs> should work now. Bro. Thank yeah, you. No worries. Um, I, I always worry about being at the bottom of the screen regardless. So you, you can't see it on a stage, but if people look at their screens, it also can get trimmed. So apologies about that. Yeah. So sure. what we're seeing here is that graph of content, right? So that digest here is the signature. It's the manifest for the signature. And now I can go find the blobs. But wait, there's more. So let's... One of the things we said we wanted to do was we wanted to up-level the registries because we don't want to break existing workflows. Users have a way they look at the list of tags. They have code that runs based on the tags that are in a registry, and they go and delete and manage lifecycle based on the tags in a registry. With this extensions to the registry, the tag, the tag listing doesn't change. It's still the V1 tag is the only thing I can see there. And the analogy, again, I like to think about is file systems. A registry is just a, a file system in the cloud. If I look at the list of files on my machine, I see the file names. That's because that's what I asked for. That's the things I think about. If I want to see the attributes of a file, I ask it, please give me the attributes of the file. When I copy the file, those things travel with it, but I don't my list of uh, list of files isn't populated with noise. It's a, it's a horizontal information. It's another pivot of information that can be displayed. I want to see that my net monitor image is signed, but I want to see it as a glyph on the portal that shows it. I don't want to see you know another tag that that shows up in there. So that's that's part of the way we think about the the breaking changes to registries. So um, okay, so, and if but whoops. If I want to see, you know, the registry does, the registry does have the manifest, so I can go oh, and ask. The, we have now fixed the bubble name tag, so if you want to go full size, you can do okay. that again. Right. <laughs> we are good. iterating here on the go. <laughs> no problem. So if I look, and this is the AZ, uh, sorry, the Azure Container Registry C or the Azure CLI, and we can see there is, let's see, because the order can be different. Uh, here's our net monitor image. You can see the tag is there, and there's a bunch of information and whether it's writable and all that goo. And here's another digest that's the Aura's artifact manifest for this net monitor, uh, sorry, the notary v2 signature. So the content is there. We can manage it as content, but we've you know made sure that it's it's thought of as an attribute to the uh, net monitor image. So just a bit of detail. All right. 
let's kind of pause for a second here. And I now have this Wabbit Networks net monitor image, right? That's the thing on this public registry, whatever. I want to bring it into the Acme Rockets environment. So a couple of things. Let's clear out, let's pretend we're going to have what I call an ephemeral client where I've got a VM that shouldn't have anything on it uh, because um, we want to make sure we're not pulling in information. I right? think your, your import environment shouldn't have state from something else. Um, if I look at the Docker images, the only thing I'm going to see is uh, a local instance of CNCF registry. We'll use this later. So that's what it's showing that noise. Um, well, anyway, so for all intents and purposes, this is a clean environment. And I'm going to clear out the notation configuration. So I'm going to clear out the policy. So now I have nothing configured. Now I want to create a certificate for, and I could pull this from Azure Key Vault, but the idea is that I want to have a cert that as I import information into my environment, I can stamp it with Arachne Rockets key. And this assumes that I've done the security scan, I've done the unit testing to make sure that update to the Debian image or the net monitor image or whatever is in compliance with, with the Acme Rockets policy. It's great that they put an update, but if an, an update is a change, is that change an accidental human thing that might break my environment or might be an exploit? Is it an evil person that made a change? Right, there's lots of things. We don't wanna blindly pull in changes from public locations. And if we look at our configuration policy, I now have, I have no verification certs, but I can sign things with the Acme Rockets key. So if I try to verify, of course, it fails because I didn't say who I trust. If I sign it with the Acme Rockets key and I put the Acme Rockets key in my trusted certs path, so let's go back and look at that again. Now I can verify the image, but I'm verifying it at this point, I'm at the boarding the plane. I wanna verify that it's signed with the Acme Rockets key. And if we look at that content, we can see that the net monitor image, notice the indentation here, there is a hash of the artifact types. In this case, it's a notary V2 signature. I now have two of them. And because I've configured my policy to only validate the Acme Rockets client, the notary, the notation client knows to look for that key and pulls the content and figures that out. So that's how we can do multiple signatures and promote them. So, um, okay, so I start off with simple signatures. I We wanna be able to support other things as well. So let's create a really highly dense SBOM <laughs> that the software build materials. It has a long list of all the packages and how the thing was built. And there's lots of great projects out there. I'm just going to create a simple JSON file that says the contents are good. All right, keep it simple. Now, I want to push that SBOM to the registry as well. When I said notation sign, you saw how simple it can be if I put it in the notation library. That notation library knows how to find things in the registry, attach them as a reference, because it's the notation CLI. It knows to set the artifact type and so forth. Or as this generic CLI, think of it as a file CLI for registries, can push content to a registry. In this case, I'm going to push it to the net monitor repo, not by tag, just the net monitor repo. I'm going to say the artifact type is an SBOM and set the reference. This target subject is that net monitor image. Right? And then, by the way, just take this .sbom JSON file and send it up and the type is JSON. I don't, I, if I had a, um, an SBOM tool, all I'd have to say is SBOM push, but because I'm using a generic tool, I have to put some extra information. So that's in the registry. And now I wanna sign it. Notary v2 signs manifest by digest. So I need the digest of the SBOM I just pushed in. So I can use the or as discover command. And now I can sign it, I'm signing that digest. If I look at that list, I'm now seeing a richer graph. I got our net monitor image. 
I've got two signatures. I've got another hash of S-bombs. And that's the first S-bomb that I pushed. And by the way, here's the signature. Notice it's hanging off of it. I'm building this rich tree of information that, because everything in the registry, I want to be able to sign. But wait, there's more. Let's say I want to generate a scan result. And I'm using uh, SNCC, which comes with the Docker CLI uh, for Docker scan. And I, this is a little more meaningful. There is a bunch of goo in here, not important. It does save it as a file. So I'm going to push that using ORAS again. I'm going to do the same thing to get the digest of the scan result. And I'm going to use notation to sign that digest. Again, I'm signing with the Acme Rockets key because that's what I configured. And if I look at ORAS Discover again, my graph is getting richer. Right? I've got a lot more information now that's in here. So now I've got this really great content and it's on a registry. It's not in several different services that I have to figure out how to configure access to it. Now I don't necessarily need to take the whole graph. I can say, hey, I only want the notary v2 signatures because the registry has this refer this new referrers API. I can say, hey, give me of that entire graph, filter it to the notary v2 signature type. And then I get back just the signatures. So this is kind of the, the things we wanted us, we want to support notation for notary, sorry, we want to support notary signatures for signing content, but we saw generic patterns that lift the entire ecosystem up. And rather than build yet another service, we wanted to build this capability into registries. So now there's one last piece that I just want to show um, from a, a, a pure demo perspective. And that is that promotion, right? So I've got this rich graph, this here that's in the public registry. I want to promote that to my private registry. If I was using my file system and I had a PowerPoint file and I had a, a, a movie file that I did with some media program and I had some Go, Golang libraries, if I want to copy that, that content from one directory to another, would I have to go fire up PowerPoint and Golang and VS Code and your media file, whatever? I, of course, that's silly. I want to use a file system API that says, copy the stuff from this directory to this directory. And it shouldn't care. It just knows how files are stored on the file system, including those attributes. Copy it across. So if we look at our private registry, we'll see that there's nothing in it. There's nothing up our sleeves. There's literally zero repositories in it. What I want to do is copy this, and I'm going to use a little early version of something. Because um, now I'm going to say, or as copy that public image to the private image with recursive. So go and travel down all of the references that we have in the registry. Oras doesn't know around notation or SBOMs or SNCC results or your favorite thing you want to attach or all the signatures that are assigned to it. It just knows how to read that generic graph in a registry and poof, it just copied that whole content. And now if I look at my private registry, I see one net monitor image and I see one tag listing for the whole thing. So that's kind of what, you know, what we've been working on and why it might be taking a little longer because we feel like the investments that we need to make are for the long term. We really want to make sure that as people are signing their content and they're improving their platforms, they shouldn't have to stand up yet a bunch of other services and there'll be more services that come out. But we shouldn't have to run another whole service that users and customers and you know, operators have to manage. We just want to improve the existing services we already have. So I can see that rich graph. I can filter that graph. I can delete the net monitor image and all the stuff that's associated with it should go away with it. Um, I might want to delete just the SBOM. You can actually remove individual pieces on there because they're all separate you know, individual objects that are stored in that graph. Um, anyway, so that's... I, I, I breathe, I'll pause and look at notes and whatever, but uh, uh, this is the where we're at at this point on the project. Um, we're really excited about it. The What you're seeing here is a combination of the notary v2 work, the notation CLI to sign, 
verify, sign, discover, verify uh, artifacts in a registry. Doesn't matter what they are. We started with container images. We realized that we can do this generically. So let's sign everything. We didn't want to create yet another service. We didn't want to break existing workflows that people have for how they interact with registries. But we did believe registries should improve their capabilities to serve the users for these capabilities. So there is enhancements to registries. Here you're seeing the Azure Container Registry support that new Aura's artifact manifest. Most users shouldn't have to care. We're working with the various registry operators so that they can add this capabilities. AWS is committed, Docker is committed. We saw the Zot project uh, just recently started working on it as well. We're really hoping that we'll just improve the capabilities of registries because like, everything in CNCF is improving. Why shouldn't registries? Um, that's been like the main focus of our effort. Great. Uh, well, I'll we pause could... there. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, maybe a few questions um, from my side at the moment. Um, so we've covered quite a lot already, but um, as you probably know, supply chain is uh, supply chain security is a very popular topic. So can you explain how Notary2 fits into this landscape a bit more? Yeah, no, it's great. In fact, let me uh, pull up a different slide. Um, you know, with everything, there's always a question of what's your focus? Like how much of the ocean are we going to boil with this effort? Um, when I think about uh, the supply chain, there's stages. There's the creation of content, right? There's the building of those binaries, building of the SBOMs, all of that information. And then there's the distribution. You know, we tend not to ask our parents to you know, compile and install from a Git uh, repo. Uh, they tend to install apps from an app store or from you know, various locations or our corporate you know, rollout will roll out something or we click an install button from various distributors. And this is where I like the model of redistribution. You know, I don't go typically to a farm and go to the cow and fill up my bottle from the cow, right? The, Milk manufacturers create that, they bottle it, they distribute it to QFC, Safeway, whatever the stores are near you, and you get that content. That content gets built and it gets distributed. It might get distributed on Docker Hub, it might get distributed on NVIDIA or MCR or whatever. You're gonna promote it into your registry. We wanna make sure that the redistribution of content is the part that we're focused on. As you're distributing it, the things that prove that I'm still Steve Lasker and I, wherever I'm traveling, that net monitor image is always signed by Wabbit Networks, wherever it goes, the Kohler faucet is always from Kohler. That point when you consume it, you can prove that regardless of where it is at any one point in time, it's still from that entity. So that's the detachable signatures that we think about. There's a lot of work going on the supply chain part than what I call to the left. Well, not what I call, but you know, this, the term that's referred to is to the left of how things are built. Notary has nothing to do with how gits are signed or commits are signed or files or all that kind of detail. There's a lot of great efforts that are around that. Um, the closest Notary gets involved in that is like you're, you, when you're doing a Docker build, for instance, and your from statement references another image. We wanna make sure that that consum consumption of another um, deployed, the distributed content is who it says it is. So it's, we're really kind of focused on the distribution and validation uh, part of the pipeline for, you know, who is it signed by an entity you trust, not just an arbitrary entity. So that's, okay. that's kind of where we think of uh, where Notary fits in. Great. Yeah. Do you have another slide that you wanted to go through? I, I think I saw something. And I oh, oh, there's, there's lots there. of content. So I, you know, I'm happy uh, to answer any questions from, from folks if there's anything else. Um, yeah. I could, you know, there's there's always interesting things to talk about. Um, you know, for me, yeah. the, one of the new things that is coming up is, um, and we've all seen this, you know, Docker kind of winds up taking the burden of the hit on this with, uh, we all want to pull from Docker Hub. And it turns out hosting all that content, because container, container images are big, um, is expensive. It's expensive, it's prob problematic because nobody ever wants anything to be deleted and so forth. So when you have, so what's been happening is same model. Like you don't go to the one store in the world to get milk. That milk is distributed across multiple locations. Well, so is the Debian, Im Debian image. 
Somebody is going to build that image, but we want to be able to get it from multiple locations. So that same image should be able to be distributed that's signed, has an SBOM, has some scan results, so on and so forth. And this is what we're really trying to refer to as really teasing out identity from location. Um, and we've been working with the SPDX and Cyclone DX community recently, and uh, Rose Judge from VMware did some great work around uh, having a Perl spec for OCI references to also decouple location from identity. So this is kind of a model we're trying to get to that the content will be distributed in multiple locations, just like you can get milk from lots of locations. Um, but you want to know who was that milk distributed by. So if there is a problem with it, we know which ones are the ones that we should you know, recall. Um, so that's another kind of important piece. Great. So um, I see that you talk a lot about SBOMs and scan results and other artifacts in the registry. So is Notary just around image signing or how does it go from there? Yeah, great question. So um, so basically, they said so the trying to carve out where we wanted to focus, the Notary V2 is all about signing things. Doesn't care what it is. In fact, you notice that my SBOM was just a JSON file. It, it, I didn't worry about getting the details of Cyclone and SPDX and, and others. The it is literally just signing anything in a registry. And the idea is maybe we could you know, use that same algorithms to sign stuff that's not necessarily stored in a registry. Uh, there's lots of other great projects that have taken on those things. So it's um, sign any artifact that's in a registry, uh, regardless of what it is. Uh, and the innovations that came from the notary requirements allow other things to be put into a registry that are also associated. So uh, we're there to support the other efforts. We're not trying to overlap with those. Great. Uh, so how about then the kind of the graph sign content? Can you elaborate on what on why that's important? So can I have as bombs and signature information in other services or how does it go? Yeah, so like the, we really, like I said, the, it, this is one of those where if you look too narrow at a problem, it seems overly simple. Um, by working in Azure and working in the center with container registry and MCR for distributing public content, you know, we see all of the complexities that users face. And we recognized that it wasn't just around signing. We had to deal with content promotion, with VNets and all those things. So the graph of content is the thing that we showed around how you can promote that so that you can verify that artifact in the location that you're operating. You shouldn't have to be able to say, well, I'm in my isolated VNet, right? I have no public egress. But now we need to validate the SBOM's valid. Well, where's the SBOM? Oh, it's hosted on this Microsoft service out in the cloud, or it's hosted on some GitHub repository or something. Well, I can't get to it because my, my VNet is locked down. And yeah, we can go and ask for a hold we put in the VNet, but we had a, a customer uh, describe this as putting holes in the submarine, right? It, you can't just have, oh, it's only one hole in the submarine, it'll be fine. Right? Any hole is problematic. So we wanted to make sure that you can promote that content. And that's kind of, and we're always looking for better words, naming is hard. Uh, we think of it as this rich graph of artifacts. It could be a long list of different signatures that get associated with it as it works through a, a workflow. Or it could be a deep graph where I've got a signature, an SBOM and a signature for the SBOM. So that's uh, kind of the way we've been thinking about it. Great. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, there's been a lot of good interactions in the in the chat. Not so many questions yet so far, or someone learned something new today and so forth. Uh, but if you have any questions, now is the perfect time to ask them. Everyone listening in, uh, we do not have too much time anymore. So now is the perfect time to start typing those out so that we have also the time to answer them. But is there anything else that you wanted to show us as far as the slides goes or, or the demo? Well, this was a last minute scheduled thing. So I, I appreciate the folks that did apply. There was another session that uh, 
it wound up getting canceled. So we took an opportunistic time of like, I think 20 hours notice. So thank you, Bridget and Karen and, and uh, for helping us get that coordinated. Uh, I'll, I'll just say for people watching the video later on, by all means, reach out. There's Slack channels, there's the projects, uh, reach out to me directly. Then uh, we can connect you to the various folks that have been working on the various projects. It's This isn't an Azure thing, it's a community engagement. Um, we've got a lot of great support and we're really excited for the uh, the work that could be done. It's There are a number of different projects this impacts because we believe that this is a, you know, a, a place that can innovate a number, number of areas. It's notary for the actual signing. It's the, the Tough project, which we're working on so we can support the rich capabilities of Tough as this content is promoted. There's some challenges there that we're working through and there's some, you know, Marina Moore from uh, that's working at NYU has been really great in trying to figure out how we're going to handle all this stuff. Um, there's the work we did in Aura's Artifacts to enable registry support, not just notary signatures, but, you know, uh, SBOMs and other stuff. Um, I, I, there's a CNCF distribution instance of this, so you can test these rich capabilities without any specific cloud. Uh, and that CNCF distribution instance is the thing that runs many of the registry projects that are out there. Uh, so we're looking to finish that up so that all registries can take on these capabilities easily and we can get on to the next big problem. So uh, we're definitely looking for more help, more feedback, more support, um, or you know, just jump in. That's the beauty of the open source community is uh, anybody can kind of jump in and help. Yeah, definitely. That's the best part. Uh, so definitely everyone jump in. Um, really great session, by the way, so far. Um, a question from Missing Character. Any new public key stores? Uh, key stores? No. By key stores, I'm not exactly sure what we're referring to here. I mean, it, um, what what Notary is currently focused on is you know we were we kind of work from the right to the left, from production back, and uh, what we heard very clearly was these are services that build and sign and distribute and validate content. Users are part of the critical part of the development workflow. By the time it becomes distributed and consumed, X509, X509 certs was the, the standard that we wanted to focus on. So X509 certs, there's a, lots of great you know, infrastructure there already. There's innovations we think we need to make. We wanted to build on the capabilities that already exist. So that's what we do today. Um, what we might add in the future, you know, there's lots of great opportunities for how we might add additional uh, signing authorities, if you will. I think that's kind of what you're getting at. But the premise here for key stores and where those keys are managed, there's already great key management systems. Cloud providers have them. There's open source projects. That's what we're trying to leverage and, and not try to invent anything new. Perfect. Um, and uh, we got a confirmation from missing character that it was exactly what they wanted. So wonderful. And maybe staying on this topic, a bit of uh, info about the future there already. But do you have any kind of sneak peeks or, or ideas as far as like what will version three look like and what will the future hold for, for the project? Sorry, for which project? Uh, for Notary or like- Oh, for Notary or for us or any of those, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, look, we're, we have some work to finish here. Um, the, uh, a lot of interesting things are coming out of it. You know, we're adding, we're starting to add search capabilities to a registry, which has been a long standard missing thing. You know, all registries have them, but everybody's done it separately. So there's no common way to get information out of a registry. Uh, if you have multiple SBOMs or multiple scan results that you push to a registry, which one is the current? How do you know Mondays versus Wednesdays? So we're thinking about how we could do ordering and stuff. We're thinking about how we can do search. Um, the way that you can push the artifact manifest does not require blobs. So we're starting to have the ability that I can add other annotations to information in a registry. So I can start to get rich metadata, you know, what images are deployed, what images should be deleted because they've hit some kind of expiration policy. Um, who built that image? You know, so there's interesting rich metadata scenarios that we'd like to be able to add uh, to registries and uh, that's some of the stuff that we're, you know, we're thinking about, but we're definitely trying to make sure that we land incremental progress um, and, you know, not try to, you know, like I said, boil the ocean there. Um, there's lots of great stuff that can be done. Uh, so Perfect. We're, we're 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to it then. Uh, final call, I think, for questions from the audience. But I have to say that, that there was already been someone uh, from, I think, our sort of saying, great demo. Thanks a lot. I have to agree. Really great session already so far. Uh, do you have any any final notes that you want to add to the audience or so? Uh, let us know how you what you think about it. Is it helping you? What are the gaps? You know, would, would you like to get involved? There's lots of great opportunities. We certainly have more problems than we have ability to solve at this point. So we're trying to carve them off. Uh, and if you want to help with some of the stuff we're already working on, great. If you have another problem you want to solve, um, there's uh, a, a great question around, can I curl binaries out of a registry? So we've been thinking about how we could do that. Um, so we, you know, so we're starting to get some ideas around it, but I don't have anybody that can actually work on it right now. So uh, there's always great priorities. The more people we have, the more things that we can work on. So that's always like kind of a, a call out. If you have some great ideas and you want to see those, you know, ideas added and improved, reach out. We'd love to figure out how we can help you help yourself and you know get people started on that. So. Perfect. Not that it. sounds really good. And and I, I guess these are the links to get involved as, as well. So yeah. everyone take pictures and notes, or you can obviously watch the on-demand recording to, to, to get access to these again. So everyone can get involved. It's really great. Um, so if there is no longer any more any audience questions, I think we can start wrapping it up. Really great session, amazing uh, content, great demo. Thank you so much for, for speaking with us even though it was on a short notice <laughs> so very extra thankful for that as well um, and thank you everyone uh, and the audience as well for joining the latest episode of cloud native lie it was great to have steve here from microsoft talking about notary v2 uh, really loved the audience interaction and everything here today um, and don't forget to join us next week when we bring you the latest cloud native code every wednesday and next week we will have um, actually a session on improved core to edge mobility and resilience for cloud native applications. So really looking forward to that as well. Thank you for joining us today and see you next week. Thank you.